Greetings and welcome to Revnaden. I'm Michael Hassenfang, and this is episode 20 of Farewell Call to Arms. It is going to be the last episode in this series, um, maybe this season. I don't know if I'm going to start up a new one or not. It has taken an interesting toll on me putting these ones out every single Saturday because um, I've been so busy and uh, I, I know I've had a calling to do this, even if it was just from my own journaling to explain what I've been going through during this time. And I know that for the most part, it hasn't been too uplifting and too great, um, but it is tied into the journaling, which I do have on Telegram and explains a little bit more on the process of what I've been going through these past couple of years of trying to walk um, more on the Lord's path or lean into him or uh, have this pioneer season, this uh, cave dwelling season, path setting season, and just this time of growth away from certain people. And um, it has been a little harsh, but also has opened me up a lot more to what the Lord is doing. And so I am thankful for this time, even though <laughs> a lot of the time I hate it. So, um, but I know it's for both my growth and for benefit of the Lord as well. And I'm hoping that throughout this process of me making these videos, that some of you who are in the same process as I am in going through these trials and tribulations and this walk that we're in, especially to that of seclusion, will give you certain nuggets or will help you out or will at least in, in, in minusculely at the very least make you understand that you're not the only one out there, that there are many of us who are going through this situation. Um, tons of us, many prophets too, even though they speak uplifting words or give words from the Lord, which is supposed to set you straight on what is happening in this day and age or to give you encouragement and stuff like that. Uh, they're, I'm sure they're getting their, <laughs> their lashings too in this time of just their, their walk that they have to go through and just the onslaught of just ridicule or denial or just the fighting that they have both in the spirit against principalities and powers, but in the natural as well amongst uh, other people who don't believe that this is happening and even that within the brethren, within the bride of Christ who doesn't understand or they're not aware or awakened to what is happening just yet. And we do need to pray for those people as well. Well, we need to pray for all people, um, <clears throat> especially those of our enemies, not just those who, who don't believe us. They're not really our enemies. They're just, they're, they're blinded to what's going on, but our literal enemies of what is happening today, those within power, those who are trying to cause death and destruction. We need to pray to, for them so that they come to the Lord um, and hopefully are not damned for all eternity. And it's been taking a, a long, arduous process throughout these years of having to clean out and remove certain things that are not of the Lord from me, or even if they are of the Lord, to remove them for a time because I, as well as I'm sure as many of you, need to focus more on him and return to our first love and to um, lean into him, to press into God and what he has for us and what he's trying to show us so that when everything does hit the fan and more people come running in, we will be ready and prepared to receive them, to guide them, to take them in and to show them exactly what has been happening these past couple of years because they either didn't see it or didn't believe it or are just totally unaware or apathetic to the situation completely or, or enemies, <laughs> literal enemies that wanted us dead. And now they've seen the light. They've seen that the Luciferian way is not the way to go. They've, they're not low, uh, bought into the lie anymore. And they're coming in and we need to have an open heart to receive them as well too. And um, not belittle them or badger them and not also pull the I told you so kind of thing to those who weren't awake or didn't believe you. Um, so that is the reason why I started up this series. One of the reasons. There is another reason, but uh, that's more of a private one. Um, and uh, for those who are in the same boat as I am, again, I hope this has helped you out uh, in either maybe just getting you the little nudges you need to get on the path with the Lord as well to maybe look at a certain situation that you have in a, a different light or take a different route be like, I never thought of it that way. Maybe I'll go this route. Um, or at the very least, just understand that, that we're all here. There, there's many of us who are doing this same thing that you are and we're just as confused and we're just as, uh, I don't want to say bothered, 
because I know it's the Lord that's trying to guide us and work through us, but it's, it is, it is a time in the fire and it's, it's just, it's a stretching and also a pressing that we have been going through a crushing, just, it's been really intense. And this entire series has been, I'm trying to accumulate in this episode into a giant prayer session for all the things that I've been mentioning in each of the different series. Now I'm going to remove some of the side notes and the, the um, little tidbits. I, I may add in a few things here and there from those, which maybe I didn't explain or express in the actual uh, episode series. Um, but I'm just going to go down the list and I think we're going to have a prayer session as a call to arms to be prepared to understand what we can pray into at least the things that I have been mentioning the things that I have been bringing up in my episodes. I'm going to go into a prayer rant, <laughs> just a long tangent on that one to gear ourselves up for what we should be looking for, what we should be praying into. Um, and I'm sure there's tons of other things that you yourself uh, have as well in your own lives, in your own situations, what the Lord is calling you to do. And if you want to add your own prayers into this as well, um, you know, either during, or, you know, if you want to pray with me in, in here and speak to the Lord, yes, I'm in agreement with this, but there's also this, you know, anyone who watches this episode and wants to go in on the prayer and be in agreement with it, or, you know, add to it, for your own things as well, or what the Lord is calling you to express into it. Um, I, I think that would be a good call to arms to just totally <laughs> send a barrage of arrows into the enemy's camp. So before we do that, we will take communion together one last time. And technically speaking, I know I shouldn't say for the last time, because I personally don't know if this is literally going to be the last episode or just the last episode of a, a season and I start up a new season. Personally, I've just been too exhausted and too worn out and just just too stressed to keep these ones going. I had it set forth that I was going to do this list that I wrote down, and I've accomplished it, and I'm doing even an extra episode for you. I know I didn't get to the 11-11, uh, thing. Maybe I'll, I'll do that just as an extra New Year's bonus, do like a little tidbit or a side note clip for you. Sorry, my hair's getting long. I need a haircut. The girls need a haircut. We need to go get haircuts. <laughs> Hopefully during Christmas vacation, I'll be able to take them there. and We can get it trimmed up a bit. Um, maybe I'll do that as just an extra added bonus episode. I, I don't know. But for the most part, as far as I, I know, unless the Lord urges me or compels me to do another video or another season or something like that, this is, this, this is it. Um, I, I hope you can take what I have given so far and use it in some sense, in some way or another, um, to do the Lord's work, or at least to guide you or to give you encouragement, or just to let you know that this is, you're not the only one. There's crazy people like me going through the same thing. So <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you for this time as we get ready to do a giant intercession prayer for you, declaring and decreeing and bringing down the strongholds of the enemy during this time on the whole list of uh, episodes that I have done, and we'll just do it in this giant uh, prayer session for you. Uh, hopefully other people will join in on it and be in agreement with it, or even add to it, um, or change certain things up. Maybe there's something in their prayers that like, well, that doesn't sound like me, that doesn't sound right, but there is something that the Lord is calling me to do within that situation. I'm going to change it up to this. Hey, it's all open. You are vast in your array of actions and callings and talents and then bestowing them all on us. And I know that not everything I say or everything I do or everything I'm called to do is what everyone else does. And they need to look at it in a different light if they're not totally in agreement with on it or in agreement with me on what I'm supposed to do and then add to it with what they're being called to do within that certain situation, but maybe a different route. I understand that. <sighs> and I know you do too. And I hope they do when listening to this prayer and joining in on it because not every prophetic word that the prophets have given that I've listened to really spoke to me or really called out to me. They, they may have jumped on in a general sense of what certain people are supposed to do, but I listen to that and go, that's, that's not what my calling was. I'm standing in agreement to what these people need to do, but I had a different calling. There was a different plan. I'm looking at that route 
uh, looking at that road and thinking about taking a, a different route into what the Lord is calling me to do. I'm sure many of you are doing the same with certain prophetic words and certain prayers as well. And even with certain watchmen on the wall, such as myself, brought up. There's a few things that Chris Hume brought up, who is also a watchman on the wall. And even Wanda Elder, certain things that, that I've listened to. And for the most part, I'm in agreement with them. Uh, but they, there's some certain things where I'm like, mm, it doesn't sound too 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 right and my understanding on the situation may be a little different we could all be wrong we would all be right it could be just a, a variance of a whole bunch of different things but let's go into this prayer session and at least be in agreement that you are here to turn the tables you're setting the record straight especially into this new 2024 year and i think we'll be seeing some wild things even though it may be getting darker for a while we will be the beacons of light that you called us to be i hope we will and that people will see us and come into your fold. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's take this. That was a big dose of your blood, Lord. I need to be sure to not pour the whole shot. <clears throat> I'm fairly certain a little goes a long way with him. So, how do we begin this? I guess, actually, <laughs> I made a note. Oh no, I made a list. <laughs> I finally typed something up. It's just, it's just mainly the titles of each episode. So I can, because I can't remember the order really. I'm just going to go down the list and pray for certain things. So it may be sort of scatterbrained because there's no really particular order to this in the way I did the episodes. It's just whatever popped in my mind. That's a, that's a route I went. And again, before starting this whole series, I looked at these and went, you know, these these kind of the way that they fall in line to one another seems to really work. <clears throat> but this prayer session may be a little all over the place because um, I'm not sure how I will really tie them in. Uh, I'll just speak into what needs to be spoken and we can go from there. I think I'm going to skip the first one, which is my intro because, I mean, not much to say there. Uh, I also don't like to pray for myself all that much in case you haven't noticed. I I try and pray for other people, for the ones that I do care about, for certain situations, for certain healings of other people. It's like I always want to see them healed, but I'm never really interested in seeing myself healed. And I know a, a lot of us maybe feel that way, but biblically speaking, that's that's kind of that's inaccurate. It's it's not scriptural to think that way, especially if, how God, how Jesus, the the Father and the Holy Spirit look at you and who you are, and what your calling is for them and what they're calling you to do and be for other people as well as to bring glory and praise and worship to them as well and if you're sore and worn out and tired and beaten and exhausted and you just don't have the strength to carry on another day and you don't want to move and you don't care about your finances you, you're you're destitute you're broken in every sense of the word that's not where god wants you um he is a loving god he is a caring god and you know, he lowered himself so that we may be raised up into his kingdom. And he wants the best for us. Um, but there's there's a lot of stretching. There's a lot of crushing. There's a lot of giving way in our own personal life to what we think, what we want. And it's actually pushing that out to make way for the Lord so that he can come into us and fully encompass us and take over our lives completely for our benefit as well as his. I mean, yes, it's always for the, the Lord's benefit, but he knows what is best for us, even though the crushing may hurt us in the world's sense or what we feel that we may want at that particular time. He knows the end result. He knows what it, the best thing is for us, and he wants to push that out so he can come in and make it perfect in our life. Um, my pastor said, said recently, <laughs> uh, you know, people complain about rights and what rights do we have? You know, and the only right we have is to die for the Lord. And my mentality was almost like, you know what? I'll take it. Because at, at this point, I mean, <clears throat> dying for the Lord is exceedingly more easy than living for the Lord. And it's true. I just, trying to live for the Lord is the hardest thing in the world. I would much rather go home 
anyone who wants to, you know, if this if this was a Columbine incident, and you ask me if I believe in God, I'd be like, yes, no, pull the trigger because I'm I'm done with this place. Uh, but I know that that's not what the Lord wants for us either. He wants us to live for Him. He wants to, he, we have a calling, we have a talent, we have gifts that we are supposed to use and give. And if that's what He meant by dying for the Lord, like giving up ourselves so that He may come into us, then I agree with that as well too. But I think dying in the literal sense, <laughs> I, would, I would much rather prefer than going through this three years of absolute hell and just stretching and crushing and pulling and just being beaten down into the ground from every which way by both the enemy and the world and even congregations and brethren. It's just like there's there's something new happening and the Lord is trying to wake us up to it and he's trying to change us for that. And we're supposed to be moving into that, but we can't be moving into that tired and sick and worn out and exhausted and beat and just giving up in every single way and waving the white flag and just being like, Lord, just take me home. I'm done with this. I don't want to do this anymore. He wants us to stand up. He wants us to put on our armor. He wants us to gear up with the sword and the shield. He wants us to use our talents. He wants us to move forward in what he's calling us to do. And as much as I don't like to begin this prayer with my intro, because it does feel... <sighs> I don't know, pr pride, arrogance, uh, self-centered. I never liked praying for me. I always, the only thing that I've ever prayed for in regards to me is for the benefit of others so that I can have them return into my life and we can have fellowship again and unity and just this, just family, you know, as the body of Christ. Uh, so we can be part and unified together again. That's literally the only thing I care about. Anything else is just uh, garbage and trash, and it's it's just it's fluff, you know. Yes, the Lord's trying to help us out with the prosperity we're supposed to have. He's turning the tables. He's bringing in restoration and revival uh, and recompense and. You know, some prophets say, you know, the people that didn't believe you are going to be eating humble pie soon once they come to the realization of what's happening. It's like, I don't, I don't care about any of that. I don't care about the humble pie. I don't care about the enemy quaking in their boots because the Lord's doing something. The Lord want, wants to do that. That's, that's his, that's his priority. That's his agenda. But I don't care about that. None of that means anything to me. I, ju I just want to be reunited with those I care about. That's all I care about. If there's wealth or anything else added to it, it's just fluff. It's it's not it's it's what the Lord may use for us for His kingdom. So because He knows that we He can trust us with certain finances and stuff like that to give and build up His kingdom and stuff like that. But to me, it's just I mean, this world's gonna burn anyway. So who cares apart from just bringing in people into the kingdom? It's to me, it's. It, it'll be nice to have a nice house. It'll be nice to have security. It'll be nice to have food. It'll be nice to have all that stuff. But if I don't have the people I care about in my life, what's the point? You know, that in and of itself is arrogance to just think that I could have all this stuff and just who, who cares about, you know, the encounters and the friendships and the, and the family and the love that I've had in the past. They're gone, but now I have all this money. So God's taking care of me and I could use it to finance a kingdom. It's like, yeah, but there's, there's no relationship value there. I mean, apart from maybe God, but God wants us to be in relationship to one another. He doesn't want us to be on this pioneer, this path setting season forever. He wants us to move forward into what he's calling us to do for everyone on this planet, for the glorification and praise of him. And this is why we're going to go down this list so we can shoot these fiery darts into the enemy's camp and hopefully bring down much of this before the evil plan really kicks off. Um, and I think it is being stifled by many of our prayers right now, even though it's still going to happen because God needs to intervene fully himself to stop this because it's not just by our doing lest any man should boast. God's going to change all of this. He's calling us to do something and I'm trying to get out this prayer so that we can all be in agreement to what he is calling us to do in the end, to be unified both with him and both with the body of Christ, who I, I hope will be the billion soul harvest that all these prophets are talking about. I got the hiccups today. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. <coughs> so let's get into it. Um, 
it's a tough one. I don't like to do my intro. I don't like to speak about me, but I suppose I should. If we're going to start interceding and declaring and decreeing on the rest of this stuff, I need to be focused as well. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time together for all of us as we begin this prayer, you know, this intercession, this declaration and decreeing. And Lord, I, I ask that you heal me both in mind, body, spirit, uh, that I would be able to speak into this prayer and intercession with a little bit more gusto, with a bit of um, comfort and counseling to those from the Holy Spirit and out to them so that they may be ready to uh, gear up and get out into what their calling is, to be in agreement with much of this prayer so that they understand exactly what some of the things we should be focused on as well. We need to totally and completely focus on you, but there are certain things we also need to pray in actions for or against in order for this plan to come to fruition that you have and that you are doing right now. And that we are not just bystanders ogling and watching everything you do, but that we're partakers in agreement. We're your army fighting. And the more we pray and the more we declare and the more we decree, the more these intercessions go out so that you can send your angels to get things done faster. Because you see your children in agreement with you and they're cheering you on and they're cheering on this plan. And I pray for healing and restoration of just especially my, my just not just body but soul in particular in my mind because these past couple of years have just been it's been beating me down and it's been giving me the physical ailments and points that have I've almost had heart attacks or strokes and I, I know i need to focus more on you and lean into you more and pressing you more and trust you more in what you are doing trust in having the faith and the hope that what i'm hoping for or to get out of this and, and the end result is also what you are trying to make for us that you're not just pulling people away and they're going to be away forever they're just going to be removed for a while so that we could grow into what you are calling us to do not just me but maybe them too maybe it's not me that needed to be pulled away but maybe they need to be pulled away so that they can grow into what you're calling them to do as well and i shouldn't stifle that i shouldn't keep asking for certain things or reunification at times that are not within your within your own time frame because it may stifle us it may hinder us it may actually um not have your plans come to fruition and we need to focus on that we need to focus on what you're calling us to do and be prepared for when that time will be returned but we need to do what you're calling us to do just like with anybody who's been in the military anybody who's in the army they need to be pulled away from their families and go overseas or go to distant lands or go to distant, distant places and have this calling to fight for the freedom of those they care about and those they love. And I ask you, Lord, that we all understand this and that we can move into that and that as the army of light, as the army of heaven, as the army of God, we can go out and have the angels with us as we declare and decree and proclaim what you are doing in this time, in this age, and understand that we are on the front lines and we don't want to take this back home. We don't want to bring this, this war back to our families, to those we care about. We want to go out. We want to be separated from them for a while so that we can fight on the front lines away from them while they stay secure and safe. And hopefully in the end, we'll come to the realization of what we are doing and they will be brought into the body of Christ as well. In Jesus name, I ask this. Amen. I also pray and ask, <clears throat> as now that my intro is over, we can go into this declaration and decreeing of the how soon is now. And I hope that I haven't led anyone astray by what your plans are, because as far as I'm concerned, as far as I've seen with the prophets and with the watchmen on the wall, and even with the white hats and people in the political structure and even in the military and many of the churches, nobody knows what's going on. Nobody has a clue what is happening. I'm just taking bits and pieces of what you said through your prophets or watchmen on the wall and sort of adding them up biblically to what I have been reading and coming to a different understanding of what you are saying in this day and age of how the dead in Christ will rise first and then we are to follow. There's no saying at all that we go in the blinking of an eye at the same time because why mention it in that manner? If the dead in Christ rise first and then we follow, but it's only a nanosecond apart, technically speaking, we all go at the same time. It is a completely irrelevant statement. Why would Paul even mention that? Also, why would Paul even mention 
you know, this as an understanding to not grieve or to not be in sorrow when it does happen. He, he says this as an encouragement to the brethren. I say this to you so you are not discouraged when it happens. When what happens? When the dead in Christ rise and then later we go. And this is also not just a passing on an individual basis where one person dies and they go to heaven. And it's just like, well, yeah, then we get raptured up later. That's not what he's saying. He's saying at the last trumpet, it will be blown and the dead in Christ will rise first. I believe this is what he's talking about with the glorified bodies going up and ascending into heaven. And it will be a spectacle. The world will see it. The world will see Jesus coming and he will be pulling out the dead in Christ with their glorified bodies as the glory of the Holy Spirit to that of uh, the upper room scenario with Pentecost comes down to us and we as the Bible also says will be changed where the dead in Christ will rise and we will be changed it doesn't say we will go up with them it also says that we will ascend later so we will be changed and we will ascend later Something is happening in the Bible where these things are starting to come into light. Certain things in the past were hidden or sealed for certain times. Certain revelations were held tightly so that the enemy could not intervene, could not uh, intercede against us and plan wicked uh, agendas. And I think this goes well with a lot of what is happening today, that though we may not understand it, it's probably good that we don't have full understanding, because if we did, then the enemy would know and he would be able to counterattack on this or plan in advance or cause more ruin. Even though God in the end still wins, it'll still be more devastating if he knew what was going on. And so things are hidden from us. And one of the things that has been revealed to me or what I, I see, what I have envisioned from certain people like Shirley Lice and Midnight Cry with Deborah and the dreams and visions that they have and the words that they have been giving out prophetically is that something's going to happen. There's going to be a space. There's going to be a division between the dead in Christ rising and us ascending. And I believe this is what people are talking about with the kingdom age, with the billion soul harvest, with the, the last harvest season that we will be entering into which will be a time just a droplet a snippet of showing exactly what uh on earth as in heaven truly means before the tribulation kicks off god is giving one last wake-up call and saying look this is what i'm trying to offer you and he's going to bestow all of this on us during this time even though there'll still be evil in the world evil won't be totally eradicated satan is still around i get that but he will be bringing in, ushering in just a, a taste of what it is going to be like and have this billion soul harvest come in. And when the last Christian is saved, the last one who finally comes to Christ fully acknowledging while the rest of the world is going to be dark because they still, after all of that, do not want God. They totally refuse him. Then God is going to pull us out and say, you want a world without Jesus? I'll give you a world without Jesus. I'll give you a world without me. I am removing my hand and in comes the seven year tribulation where Satan has full reign, full reign over everything because that's what people wanted. That's what they're going to get. God is not going to deny them their wishes and they will get what they want. Seven year tribulation until they finally come in into the realization that they do need God, that this lie of Satan is, is not the true way to life. It only leads to damnation. And then after that comes the thousand year reign of Christ. So I'm not speaking absolute truth here. I'm just speaking what I've read in the Bible and what I've heard from different prophets and what I've just surmised from this. So if it doesn't happen, it doesn't, but it just be prepared for it. If it does be prepared, if we see a spectacle like that, and then we're discouraged, as Paul said, wondering why we were not risen up with then Christ, why we're stuck here. There's still work that needs to be done. And this is why Paul wrote it as a means to uplift you to, to not bring you down into discouragement, but to give you encouragement when it does happen. I feel this is what he was trying to say. This is one of the mysteries. He even said, I tell you a mystery, this is going to happen. And it's not going to, it's a mystery in the sense that it's hidden and it's not going to be revealed to us till a later date or until it actually happens. Or maybe some of us that are trying to express it and nobody believes it until it happens. And then they got to come to us where we can give the encouragement and tell them, look, here it is right in the Bible, read it. I pray that people have an understanding of this before it happens, that they're not discouraged, that they're not brought into suicidal thoughts 
when this flipping of the table happens, when this initiation of the kicking into the last harvest season goes down, that they have at least some sort of an understanding to come to those who were trying to say it so that we can fill in the blanks for them or give encouragement and comfort from the Holy Spirit to come into them and settle them down and then prepare them for this last harvest season. As part of the gifts and the glory in the Pentecost upper room scenario that will come when the dead in Christ rise and he bestows this on us where we will be changed as it says in the Bible that people learn to start speaking in tongues a bit more as a use of self edification but also proclamation within the church and for the Holy Spirit in words which you cannot utter yourself because you don't know how, because you're too tired or too exhausted, or you can't form the words in your own mind, or you're too stressed out, or you just want to speak something in and let the Holy Spirit speak through you so that it can be done. You need to learn to speak like that. You need to practice into that and hone in on that, even just for your own self edification so that you can grow into it. And I think when the Holy Spirit comes and the glory falls on you, this is going to be done in exponential amounts. So don't say people are going to be drunk <laughs> be in agreement with the lord lord we stand in agreement with you on this that we will receive all gifts given to us and use them when the holy spirit encourages us to use them or for our own self edification so that we can be built up and work stronger for you in jesus name we pray this also goes for the anointing with holy oil or holy water that we use that as a means of identifying with you in the body of Christ I was gonna grab my oil it's over there sorry so I'll just you know what I'll do it anyways so I got a few I'll use this one because it actually smells nice <laughs> and I want to smell nice let me smell nice Lord Lord I anoint us anoint the head the eyes so that I do not wander with my <laughs> <laughs> with my addictions I cover my mouth with it so I can learn to control my voice um, even though I, I swear like a sailor a lot of the times in the words of Brad Stein you slam your hand in the car door something's coming out of your mouth things need to be contextual they need to be in context you can't be swearing all the time you need to control your mouth I know sometimes things slip out and it slips out for me probably more times than not I'm asking, Lord, with the anointing for both the eyes and the head and the mouth that you please grant me more counsel or give me more control over my own body so that I know what to say and what not to say before I actually say it. I don't want to be stuck with uh, foot and mouth like Peter. <laughs> foot and mouth disease. So <clears throat> give me more control over the things that I'm saying. Give me more guidance uh, for my, my eyes to view the things which are appropriate and are good for you and not constantly ogling things which will lead the soul either into temptation or discouragement or even damnation, dare I say. I need to come to the realization that even though we do all this right now, we do the anointing, we're looking for uh, the glory to fall upon us and seeing the dead rise in Christ and, you know, waiting for this last harvest season to come. Though that we are down and being led away and being pulled away from everyone we know and care about from those who, who uh, love us but don't believe a word we say. <laughs> They're just like, you're nuts, you're insane. This is, this is way left field compared to what we learned in the Bible before. And we're down and discouraged and depressed because almost practically everyone we know in our life has been removed from us. And those who haven't been removed from us, we have to live with and they think we're crazy. <laughs> so, or we need to go to the congregation and sit with people who think we're insane. We need to just realize, as the Lord said with me, that they will catch up, that they will be coming into the fold, that we need to give them time because God is working uh, for everyone on their own time scales. It is in his time scale, but for us to come into recognition, it's not going to be just everyone lined up together in an agreement at one time. We need to realize, and Amanda Gray said this best, that if it took you 20 years to come into Jesus, to finally be in his full, to, to, you know, to understand what your calling is to be a true, uh, child of God, if it took you 20 years to come into that, 
don't think somebody else should do it in 20 years also or even in 10 years some people may take four years some people may take their whole lifetime to get into that and with this new flipping of the tables including the brethren of christ who've been raised up in a certain denomination or a certain doctrine or a certain telling of how the scriptures are supposed to be brought forth or how they believe the scriptures are it may take them even longer than those who are agnostic or atheist or just outside of christ and they see things change and then they're brought into the fold it may take longer for the people that you care about who you know are christian uh, to turn around and see what is truly happening and just realize that you're one of the few people who have been aware and woken up to this and you're preparing um to lead people to help people when that billion soul harvest comes in god is prepping you for this and this is why you're being pulled away it's so you don't get pulled back into that and you lose faith and lose sight of what he is calling you to do as strange and bizarre as all of this is stick with what he is saying stick with what you're being pulled to because if it was just me or if it was just somebody else out there who believed this you know and it was just you know one person or maybe like five even you know where it's just like okay this is this is some sort of weird cult thing where it's just like these people are thinking this and it's a little you know bizarre and so i'm not going to follow it but you know this and i know this that there's millions of people who are in agreement with this and we're all being pulled away in our own scenarios into our own things we we see them we listen to them we speak with them in chats and places like elijah streams and with watchmen on the wall and any live streams that you see with uh, julie green or amanda grace or wanda elders the countless there's the countless amount of prophets where we talk and we we just we keep telling people we're so alone we're so distraught we're so just like pulled apart from everyone else but that is our field this is where we belong right now this is our congregation this is the people we're speaking to and it's not just one or 20 or 100 it's thousands upon thousands upon thousands on each site and when you add it up there's probably millions across the planet who are in agreement with this this is not some obscure thing something is happening here and those who are alone, those who are depressed, those who are pulled aside, those who are doing their cave dwelling season, those who are pioneering or passing into what the Lord is calling them, pulling them away from certain people, just remember, you are not alone in this. One, those who you care about, as the Lord said with me, they will catch up. They will return. They will come back into the fold. They will see what is going on. But the second thing you need to realize is that you are not alone. I mean, yes, the Lord is always with you. The Lord said he will never leave you nor forsake you. But even excluding that sense look at the people that are on the sites look at the subscribers look at the live stream viewage look at the thousands upon thousands of people who are listening and are in agreement and are praying for you you are not alone you may be alone in the physical sense as in all these people who you are in agreement with or and, and know that they are part of this this new change maybe in different settings you know maybe in different towns maybe in different countries they're far away from you but we are all in agreement online we are seeing what is going on we could speak to one another there we can give encouragement there you are not alone please believe that it took me a long time to understand this myself until i just finally looked down and saw the subscribers and saw the people that are in agreement and the testimonies they were giving and the writing online that they're giving to you specifically praying for you giving you encouragement i'm there as well too doing the same when i can when i'm not at work and heavenly father we stand in agreement with you in saying that, yes, they will return. Those we care about will catch up. They will be brought into the fold. And yes, we, we also need to understand and know that you have given us these outlets, that you have given us Elijah, uh, Elijah Stream, that you have given us Watchmen on the Wall, that you have given us all these other prophets who have their own shows, which we catch daily. And the words that even just as lowly as I am putting out, even though I only got a handful of viewers, that may explode when the flipping comes, when the last hour comes i may get thousands of viewers i don't know all i know is you are not the only person out there i need to realize this you need to realize this we need to come in into agreement with this with the lord and we the heavenly father we do come in agreement with you on that to know that we are we're, we're not alone out there we're not in the dark you are there the brethren is there and those we love will come back but it needs to be in their own time. It needs to be in the time that you have set for them to come to the realization of it. And it could take years. 
it could take decades for some people, but know that they will return. And as sad as it may be, even if you may not get the chance to finally be reunited here on this planet, you will be able to be reunited with them in heaven or in the new earth and new heaven, where you will be able to spend eternity with them forever doing stuff and catch up on all the things which you missed out on here. As much as I hate that thought, it's still the last and final option that you will be with them. And for those who are absolutely positively not in agreement with what the Lord is doing right now, pray for them earnestly. Pray that they have conviction by the Holy Spirit to come into the fold so that they're not lost into damnation. I ask this in Jesus' name for all of those who are watching this right now and are having pains of people that they want to be brought into the fold, but know that they are so far away from you. It's, it's even beyond the prodigal son. They just, they want nothing to do with God. And I, I pray that they come into the fold in the end, that there's some sort of shaking that you're going to do that we also are in agreement on that will wake up the majority of people on this planet to come to your fold, especially those who are completely 100% lost. In Jesus' name, I pray for that. I also pray to, to those who are in thinking that they're lost and that they're useless and that you know God is pulling them away from everyone to realize that he is doing so to build you up because you are a king and a priest of the new Jerusalem. You are a soldier. You are an ambassador. And above all that, you are a child of God. All of these are stations. All of these are things which you can do for the Lord, which he's calling you into so that you can do works and marvels, you know, to give glory and praise to God. But even if you fail at that and you still have belief in Christ, you are still a child of God. It may not get you the rewards in heaven that you were hoping for because you just did nothing and you sat idly by this whole time or you just didn't believe you had the strength to do it or the gumption or the motivation or the will or you were too much in fear to get things done for the Lord. Above all your stations is still the child of God, which gets you entry into heaven. You will be going there. But there is a pulling away. There is an action he is calling us to do as his sons, but also as judge and ruler over the entire world. We have stations and positions we are set into as not just a child of God, but workers for him to bring forth. We are supposed to steward this world correctly. We are supposed to intercess for it and intercede and declare and decree and fight off the enemy. You have a calling. You have a calling as a king and as a priest and as a soldier and as an ambassador. You're supposed to be doing all of these things and <clears throat> listening to what the word, or the word, well, the word, yes, Jesus and God, the Holy Spirit is calling you into what your talents are, what your gifts are. Understand that you are not just some random person, some useless person in his kingdom. You're a king. You have a crown on your head. You are a priest to God. And you need to start working into your abilities, into what he is calling you to do, what your gifts are, so that people can see who you are and come into the fold better and say, I want some of that. I want to be like what they have. I, I see the glory of God falling on them. I see the rewards that he has. I, I, I see how they're leading their life. I see the joy within them and I want to come into that. This is how you do it. It's not just saying you believe in Christ. It is the action of doing so to get people to turn their heads and look and go, what do they have that I don't? I just want some of that. And they will come into that because you are adhering. You are listening to the calling of what God is having you do. You are using your talents. You're using your powers. You're using the gifts that God has bestowed on you to make this world a better place and to bring more children into his fold. And I declare and decree that those who haven't come to this realization or are still sketchy or still insecure of what they are doing, Lord, to give guidance of the Holy Spirit, to give comfort, to give the realization of who they are, Lord. I ask this in Jesus' name so that they can be built up and strengthened during this time, during this last harvest season, as the people come running and clawing their way in to try and find answers. We will be prepared and ready to move on that in Jesus' name. I also pray for those who are going through extreme opposition, such as myself. It seems to have dwindled within the past couple of months. I don't know for me if that's going lax or if it's because maybe I'm getting more into prayer and the demons are being fought off a little bit more. But as of late, I can't even remember any of my dreams from the past couple months. Like it's, it's weird. It's like, I, I just, 
that was where I had the most spiritual opposition and fighting that I've done on behalf of other people and of myself and for you. And it's just, it's not there anymore. Something has happened. It's been like switched off. And I think maybe the enemy found out that he can't attack through those means. I don't know what it is, but <clears throat> for those who still are going through spiritual opposition, and I, I hope it's not a lack of it because they're they're starting to fall away or they're starting to become not a threat to the enemy. And I hope that's not me either. I hope I haven't dwindled in my, my strength and, and my use of what you're calling me into that the enemy just doesn't care. I'm hoping that it's for, you know, <laughs> the acknowledgement that they can't attack me that particular way anymore. Um, and for those of you who do have that, who are being oppressed, who are being beaten down by the enemy, I declare and decrease strength upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit to use these monster mashing skills uh, to <clears throat> remove possession and oppression from both yourself and from others and know that we do not fight those in the flesh, but against principalities and powers, against the wickedness in high places. These are demonic entities. And even if they are enemies in the natural that are fighting you, it is still the enemy that is behind them pulling the strings, controlling them. It is a demonic entity, a Luciferian agenda that they have upon these people. And you need to pray for them as well, that they come into the fold of God. I ask that, that you be strengthened and have no fear of these demonic entities at all. I'm going to break my prayer for a sec because I just came to the realization that after having that dream that I mentioned in the prelude to the monster mashing, where I woke up and I heard the demons screaming with so much hate against me and just cursing and yelling, trying to do everything they can against me. And I had this calmness over me, like to, to the point that their screams almost lulled me to sleep. It made me think of when... Jesus crossed the sea with the disciples and that storm came and it was raging and howling and just beating down and everyone in the boat was freaked out except for Jesus. He was sleeping. He was lulled to sleep by the screams. This is what I, I think it must have felt like for Jesus during that time because it was, it was almost like they were screaming and I was laughing at it. I was chuckling. I didn't want to chuckle too loud because I thought I'd wake up Liz, but I was chuckling at this and I'm like, there's nothing you can do. I have lost all fear from you. Like there's nothing here. You will never come back and taunt me, you know, with, with your demonic agenda again. And I just came to the realization that I was praying this. One of the reasons why, uh, I, I, I haven't had any spiritual attack dreams is that was the last dream I had the last time that they were screaming. And it wasn't a dream. I was, I was awake. It was, I mean, I was fully awake and I was hearing the fan. It was like the vibrations of the fan were coming through and I was hearing the screaming through that. And after I banished them, the demonic screams faded and all I heard was just the sound of the fan. Um, and I just realized right now that was the last spiritual attack dream that I've had. So I'm, I'm wondering if maybe that's true. Maybe they have <laughs> realized that they, there's just, there's nothing they can do anymore. Like, not only is there nothing that they can do, but if they come to me in my dreams again, uh, pardon my French, but they're probably in for a major ass whooping. So, yeah, I, I just, that's kind of weird how I, thank you, Lord, for bringing that up. I, I, I didn't even think of that. I was kind of curious and wondering why I haven't had any of these attacks or I had to do any of these actions lately. And it's like, well, it's because I pretty much laughed them away the last time it happened. So, yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Lord. Um, <clears throat> Sorry for the pause. Um, had family members out there. I got my, it's the weekend, so I have the weekend off. I'm going to have Christmas off. And so I, I heard them yelling out there. I thought they were calling me, but I guess not. So let's continue where I was. I pray during this time for the President of the United States, the actual President of the United States, um, that everything will be exposed, everything will be turned over, everything will be brought to light, not just to the seat that he lost, but to all the seats which were lost, to the evil agenda that is going down right now and the exposure of everything that is happening, both in the uh, child sex trafficking, the, the black market, uh, the evil agenda that the global elites are trying to pull to bring death and destruction to us all so that we could be pulled into their one world system. But I also pray for those who are, again, the enemy, and for those who 
definitely know they are the enemy, know what they are doing, that they have a realization, a conviction of the Holy Spirit to turn to the ways of light, to realize that this way, this evil Luciferian agenda is not the way to go, that is not just for their own selfish needs and power gains, but that they turn to Christ. I pray for them almost even more, because if we could get them turned, we won't have to worry about our president and this constant badgering and beating over the head that he is going through in the court systems and with politics and with the government system, just everything going down these days. I pray for his protection. I pray for protection for his family and for his security, for his secret service agents, for the White House, for the military, for those who are going to be making the move soon and the exposures that are going to be coming out and the retaliation that will happen from the global elites from this Luciferian order because of it to bring us back into their worldly system. I pray for their covering and protection by your angel army, your angelic host, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, and hopefully the conviction of that Holy Spirit, and even actions against a global elite to try and come into your fold before their lives are lost and then for all eternity. I pray this in Jesus' name. I pray that the church comes into this blending unification and loses its grip, um, f that the spirit of religion has such a strong hold on it to separate denominations. And though certain denominations, the pros that they have may be a, a strong foundation of what they are built on, the exclusion of the other gifts or the other callings or certain doctrines of faith which they have that are, you know, extra biblical, that are outside the Bible but within their own denominations, enforcing people to adhere to their own box set of an organized religion, as opposed to seeing all the pros that all the denominations have and to eat the meat and to spit out the bones and to unify into one giant body of Christ and not be so uh, agitated or on the offense from so many other denominations and thinking that you are the greatest out of all of them and that these people are wrong and you're right is just a horrific way to live with the body of Christ. You need to be brought into what the Lord is calling you to do, what your gifts and talents are, why he puts you on this planet, and what your action for him is in regards to what he wants you to do and into the, the talents that he has for you, and also into the rewards that he has bestowed upon you for doing such things. We need to stop bickering and complaining. I've seen it so much, so many times online, so many people fighting about the stupidest stuff stupidest thing which has almost nothing to do with christianity but their own or organizational box of what christianity should be that needs to stop so fast lord i'm asking and begging and pleading with you that people your your own children come into recognition of what it is you're trying to have them do throughout the entire body of christ not just in these little segments scattered all about and everyone against everybody else and nobody has a clue to what's going on and everyone thinking that they're right and everyone else is wrong there are some things which are extra biblical that could be right. They could also be wrong. Again, we need to eat the meat, spit out the bones, unify together under one thing, which is God, which is you. And then everything else that is extracurricular either fall into place or be discarded. I hope the blending comes into this realization that we could be unified as one body of Christ. We need to do this so severely, and it seems to have gotten exponentially worse within the last few years, probably because of the demonic attack that we've been having lately against the congregations, against the body of Christ, against the bride, against your children, so that we're all fighting and taking up arms against one another instead of taking up arms against the one person who's causing the disaster and looking to you for all the answers and not man and what they think should be right what you think is right what you know is right and what you declare is right and we need to adhere to that and nothing else and be in agreement with that and nothing else and if it is extracurricular that is good then allow it but don't beat people over the head with it i ask this in jesus name amen because we really need that very bad this includes those who are denying the prophetic of today so many prophets out there right now, so many. And yes, we are to use discernment. We need to have knowledge that they're speaking out against what your plan is, 
that this world is going down in a spiral, that this nation is lost. They are not hearing the prophets correctly. They are not adhering to the words of what you are trying to do. They're not standing in agreement with this. We need to have discernment during this time. I understand that. But to have discernment against the things which are bad means we also need to have discernment from the Holy Spirit of the things which are speaking truth and are of good. It's not all things are bad. If all things were bad, God would not tell us to have discernment from it. He'd say to just deny it altogether, to not listen to anyone or anything. No problem prophets at all. But if we're supposed to have discernment to those speaking, and there's thousands upon thousands of them out there, not all of them can be wrong. If we are to have discernment, we need to have discernment on the ones that are speaking the truth. And there are many of them who are speaking the truth right now, and we're still denying them. There are still people who are laughing at them. There are still people who are not believing what they are saying. And though, yes, they will come in at a later time, they will catch up. I understand that. The point of the matter is, is to not push away all prophetic words. We need to take in and listen to what they have to say. We need to have discernment and we either need to say thank you, but no, or yes, I stand in agreement with that. And now is the time to not be pulled apart even more. We need to be unified in the body of Christ and to understand what is going on. Just in the days in the past, God used these people. He used the prophets. He used people to speak the word out to the masses to get them to understanding what God is doing. In this day and age, we don't think that happens anymore, which is absolutely ridiculous. Paul says he knows in part, he prophesy in part, you know in part. And one of these days, knowing and prophecy will be done away with. So many people think the prophecy is done away with because of that one statement. Well, are you done knowing stuff? If you're not done knowing stuff, you're not done with prophecy. Prophecy is a forbearance, a foreknowledge, the pushing in of something happening in the future to give you knowledge of it in the present now. If you're not done with knowledge, you are not done with prophecy. They go hand in hand and people need to realize this and start paying attention to what some, certain people are saying right now. And there's many of them and they're all in agreement and they're all on the same page. And we need to wake up to what is happening and be aware to that and not condemn the prophets because God does not hold that lightly just as in the days of Elijah when he came out and was a prophet and everyone was poking and making fun of him and he was one man versus an onslaught of the evil prophets and priests there of him calling down the fire and they cannot do anything we are entering into the days of Elijah we are entering into the days of Jezebel and of Ahab and the harlot and the beast that are rising up right now and trying to take control of all the seven mountains of society. We need to call them down. We need to beat them back down into the ground to push them away and saying, you are not having this planet. We are also entering into the days of Noah, this turning, this revival session, this period of shaking, of flooding, though God said he would never flood the earth again with water. He is going to be flooding the earth again with fire with his spirit. And it is coming soon. We need to be awake and aware to all that is going down. To fight and push back against the Nephilim, these dark entities who are still around even today, as the spirits of as the spirits of old, these demonic spirits that are taking over society and physically beating you down every day to try and push out the word of God and push in their agenda. I ask you, Lord, that you come and flip this. We are also entering into the days of Joel. If you read the days of Joel and the sins we have committed and the pulling away from God and what he is about to do to shake us and wake us up so that we come back into repentance that we put on the sackcloth and we come down lowly before you to realize it is you who does all things. It is not through us. It is not through our vanity. And at the same time, we are also coming, I believe, into the age of Philadelphia. And we need to be aware to not in and not fall into the praise of becoming the age of Laodicea, though I think at the end of this last harvest age, we will be entering into the age of Laodicea, and that is the reason why the tribulation happens. But of now, we are coming into the age of Philadelphia, the age of brotherly love. Everyone wants to be the Philadelphian church. All churches say that they're the Philadelphian church. As far as I'm concerned, none of them are the Philadelphian church. We haven't reached that point yet. We are going to reach that pivotal moment in this last harvest season, in this restoration, in this revival period of billions of harvest, which we have never even seen since the beginning of time. And I believe that will be the age of Philadelphia. But a lot of the things need to happen first. Ezekiel, Noah, Joel, once all these things are processed and put into place and those evils happen and we come to the realization and the heirs of our ways and turn ourselves back to God, we will see this bring forth in the last harvest season into the age of Philadelphia. And I stand in agreement with that. 
In Jesus' name, I pray, come soon for that, because I don't know if I can go another year of this. I also pray into true holiday seasons. I've noticed on YouTube, Lord, that there have been many videos now coming out. Finally, thank you, Lord. In fact, that's the video I'm going to put up today as the video recommendation. I wanted to do it about Christmas, and this video is about Christmas. Actually, I'm sorry, I wanted to do nothing. <laughs> no recommendations a day and have you focus on Christmas, but this is a Christmas video, so I'll post that one up, where people are starting to take back the holidays. They're starting to go in and dive in deep and go into historical readings and realize that a lot of the things that say, uh, uh, that they mention are pagan. Oh, Christmas is a pagan holiday. They're actually going now and reading back and going through the hi historical writings and realizing no, it wasn't a pagan holiday at all. No, the Christmas tree is not pagan. It actually has Christian value to it. It started as a Christian um, a Christian idea. And we're, we're finally taking that back. Just as, just as Halloween was All Saints Day and All Souls Day, we've, we've, it started out as a Christian holiday. And Satan loves to take things that the Lord loves and twist it into his own bidding and makes it corrupt and evil to the point that we either follow the pagan ways or we see the true Christian nature of what these holidays were as now pagan and evil and we shouldn't worship them at, at all. This is how the devil comes in. Since he can't make anything, he will take the things that God loves and twists and distorts and corrupts them. And I've been seeing a lot of videos lately, again, on YouTube, where they're finally coming out and studying these things, deeply studying these things and saying, no, Halloween did not start out as a pagan holiday. It was not evil. It actually started out as All, so All Saints Day, All Souls Day. It was a Christian holiday. The Christmas tree is not pagan. It never was pagan. It never was in relation to Saturnalius or the Yuletide or anything thing like that those were separate entities those were different pagan holidays which in turn actually were celebrated on different times of the year christmas trees were christian and they're finally revealing these videos and i want us to focus and hone in on the things that god loves the thing that that god enjoys and that we are to worship and celebrate for him and give praise and glory to him on these holidays and we're not supposed to remove them. We're not supposed to see them as evil. We're not supposed to believe the lie of Satan and think that everything that, that he twisted started off as pagan and therefore we're not supposed to celebrate it at all and we turn from God again from that. We are seeing a realization of these holidays starting off as Christian and all the devil does is steal and destroy them. Just as we've seen in the astronomy, the stars in the heaven, as, as Chuck Missler said, each of the astrological symbols were actually signs which told the creation story. And God uh, brought that forth for us to give us glory and worship and honor to him. And the devil came and twisted that through both the Egyptian and the Babylonian systems into thinking, no, these are, this is actually astronomy. This is horoscopes. This is all anti-God, which is silly because God created the stars. They're there for a purpose. They're there to tell his story. And all of a sudden we made up our own things and decided to twist his story into something corrupt and evil and demonic. Or even if it isn't demonic, something that pulls us away from God, which in the end, I feel is demonic <laughs> it's demonic either way <clears throat> but they never started out as the horoscope as the astrological signs we have today they actually had biblical meanings to them and as the devil always loves to come and twist and corrupt everything else he did that as well we are starting to come to the realization and the understanding that much of this is scriptural much of this is biblical much of these have christian foundings they weren't pagan they never were pagan or if they were pagan in the past they started out as in like uh with, with the israelis or with the, the times of uh, the hebrew nation being as slaves and they brought it with them into their enslavement and then it got corrupted we are starting to see this and I, I pray and declare and decree that a lot of people who are christians who enjoy these holidays but are sketchy or not sure if they should be worshiping it uh or not worshiping the holidays but you know celebrating these holidays and worship of god that uh they don't want to do it because they think it's pagan and though the concept of halloween with all the people dressing up in as demons you know and demonic entities and stuff like that uh is in and of itself 
evil and twisted and demonic because Satan came in and twisted the concept of what All Saints Day and All Souls Day is supposed to be. We need to go back farther and read up on this and understand that some of these holidays did have Christian values to it and we need to take it back from Satan. Satan does not have that day. He doesn't have Halloween. He doesn't have any day. No day belongs to Satan. We need to take it back from him and say, you don't have this day. This day is the Lord's. Every day is the Lord's. We celebrate the Lord all days of our lives. And there's certain feasts and festivals and celebrations, which we do celebrate as well. We need to take that back and say, you will not have this anymore. We, were, we are removing the corruption, all the corruption out of all the holidays, and we are returning it back to God. I pray during this last harvest season that this gets returned back to you, Lord, and that we can celebrate and have certain events and holidays and celebrations that honor and glorify and give praise to you. In Jesus' name, I pray for that. I also pray for the dreams and visions to be stowed upon the body of Christ, as you said, in these days that people have visions and dreams. And I've had plenty of those, and as of late, they've sort of dwindled down a little bit, but... I pray that those who still have the visions and dreams, that they come to them, that they have an understanding, that they can get it out, that they can uh, know that this is from you and make people aware of the changes which are coming, that you can use them as a vessel to bestow all this knowledge, all the prophetic words, all the visions, all the dreams, all the speakings that you do to us, all the insight and the counseling that you give to us, that we are aware and awake of this and that we use it for the glory of your kingdom this is not just a bunch of pentecostal mumbo jumbo lord that even though they honed on that particular talent on that particular side of christianity and saying this is the one we wanted to focus in on this is the specialties we want to do as gifts of the spirit that is not solely for the pentecostals and to every other denomination is viewed as crazy or obsolete or not in use anymore or silly or stupid even though the bible specifically says to do this and about 80 percent of the church is laughing it off it's not pentecostal mama jumbo we need to take control of the gifts which the holy spirit gives to us this is not a joking matter. This is serious stuff. This is stuff he is trying to give to us for us to use. And we're laughing it off. Or we're saying it's obsolete or it doesn't exist anymore. Or this is a stupid idea because you live in fear and you don't want to use that stuff. We need to start taking hold of this up to what the Holy Spirit is giving us. We need to go out. We need to use it. We need to not be in fear, both of what the Lord is calling us to do, the gifts we are receiving, or of that of the world and what they are trying to do upon us. It seems we're having a two-edged sword of fear being laid upon us. We don't. We fear what the Lord is doing, what he has for us. We also fear what the world is doing, what they have for us. We need to call them down and call up God more. We need to call ourselves to him, lean into him, press into him more, use the gifts that he's calling us to do, know what our calling is, know when our talents are, are supposed to be honed, and use that against the enemy, against their agenda. We need to celebrate in what the Lord is doing, pretense, and the understanding and the faith and the hope that what he said he is going to do, he is going to do, and we need to rely on that and not be in constant fear of these guys. And we need to celebrate and be like, yes, Lord, I am in agreement and in acceptance of what you are doing. I'm looking forward to the day of the last harvest. I'm looking forward to the, re the restoration, the revival and the recompense and the turnaround and the prosperity and everything that you have during this time. The exposures that you're going to give against the global elite and the realization to many of people who are lulled to sleep by the enemy to wake up to what is going on and come to the realization of what you're about to do. I stand in agreement with this, even though it's taking way way longer than anticipated and i hope it's not going to take way longer beyond that either but i know that it is in your perfect timing for your perfect purpose to bring people into your kingdom lord and we stand in celebration especially during this time of christmas in the celebration of the birth of your son our savior and lord jesus christ we need to talk down speak out call down leviathan and the lying media that is trying to beat us down against what the Lord is calling us to do, against us having agreement and celebration to what he is trying to do. He is trying to beat us down into the ground and give us uh, despair and just unyielding pain and suffering and, and a need to just call in and just wave the white flag and to stop doing what we're being called to do. But we need to call down the lying Leviathan of the media 
within the pillars of society, of big tech and of government, and realize that all they have is words and they're useless words. Not only are they useless words, they're irrelevant words because they're just lying. It is a lying media. They do not have the upper hand. God has the upper hand. And we stand on the side of God and we call down this lying media. We call it to be exposed. We send the angelic host and the power of the Holy Spirit to expose every nook and cranny of Leviathan in this lying media. We also call the angelic host and the Holy Spirit to rip away the reins of Leviathan from the harlot, this Jezebelian spirit, this Ashtaroth or Ishtar, who is just the abomination of everything on this planet, of just wicked, lustful, sinful desires, of sexual immorality and the confusion she is just imbibing on so many people with the trans agenda, with the homosexual agenda, and not just with enemies of, I shouldn't say enemies, uh, well, and enemies to her, <laughs> she's trying to force and turn to herself, but <clears throat> also with the heterosexual world and just the vices we have with our own sexual immoralities and the fornication and adulterous needs and removal of the family unit and the destruction of the family, and the abortion of children, and babies within the womb. We call down Jezebel. We smash her from society, from this world. I pray, declare, and decree, Lord, that you remove her as fast as you can so we can start waking up to what it is you're calling us to do and not be lulled to sleep by these lies of the enemy and by the sexual lusts of this harlot. And until that happens, Lord, I ask that you give us the spiritual armor we need to overcome the day. We ask this every day of you. If we can, we partake in communion with you every day to understand the broken body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and know that he will come again and turn the tables around and bestow upon us the Pentecostal gift of the Holy Spirit, the wave that will take over this planet and bring in usher in this last harvest revival before the tribulation kicks off, this age of Philadelphia, Lord which is set to go on, I don't know, a century or more from what I hear, though I don't know the times. I ask and pray and declare and decree that you give us a strength to move forward, to keep going into what it is you're calling us to do, and to have the faith and the hope that you will do what you say you're going to do, the understanding, the knowing that you're going to do it. And we need to encourage those around us, especially those who are walking this path right now, to know that they are not alone that we are unified together and that God is with you even if you feel you're alone. But we stand in agreement and in prayer and comfort with you as well. Until the day that everyone comes flocking in, <laughs> we just need to be prepared and ready for that. <clears throat> so that is the end of this episode, this series, if not, I'm sorry, this season, if not this series. This may be the last one I do. Um, it's been an interesting journey. Uh, I pray that you all have a wonderful Christmas season. I'm not going to <clears throat> recommend any book apart from the Bible. <laughs> so I recommend for 2024, you start reading the Bible. Uh, I'm not going to recommend a particular type, though I did just order the Patriot Bible in the King James Version, and I want to get the Geneva Patriots Bible which has the old uh, 1599 version of the Geneva Bible, but a whole bunch of other documentation in there uh, th that speaks into our nation. You know, uh, the Magna Carta and the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, a whole bunch of writings from the Founding Fathers and incorporates it into that. Uh, that's what I think I'm going to try and get into for this next year. But for 2024, try and read the Bible. Keep up with your scriptures daily. <clears throat> As I said earlier in this prayer, excuse me, I'm going to post up something that uh, some person did. I forgot his name. It's it's just It was just a random clip that I came across. So I don't know the guy's name, but I'll link it. Uh, at how he did his research and he goes in and he's like, Christmas tree isn't pagan. And how everyone always says, Christmas tree is pagan. You shouldn't do it. You're bringing your incorporating pagan stuff into Christianity. And that's a devil trying to corrupt stuff. He went back and he read all these records. There's no mention at all, ever, in any of the ancient world about the Christmas tree or about that particular tree 
within the pagan holidays. And the only time it does show up is at the starting within Christianity in like the 1400s. So yeah, uh, we need to start paying attention to those videos and start calling out Satan for what he is, which is a liar because he's trying to incorporate his paganism into the Christian holidays so that we don't follow it or so that it becomes so corrupted with pagan and demonic worship that we remove Christ altogether from it. So start studying a little bit more guys i think that's something else the lord is trying to have us do and i think he's he's coming he's bringing a lot of this to light i think this is part of the last harvest revival as well too is to him to remove all the lies all the corruption all the twistedness from what originally was celebrated as christian holidays and it might sound weird but i'm actually looking forward to halloween being that where all the demonic is removed from it and return we return it back to a celebration of autumn harvest or all souls day or all saints day or you know we, we we something that brings it back to the christian foundations so that should be interesting i, I look forward to that time as well um be ready for 2024 um i i hear a bunch of things that this is going to be the year of the exposures and we're going to be seeing a lot of things that even we who are following all this are going to be like wow i, I didn't expect to see that People we thought were on our side aren't. People we thought who aren't on our side are. A lot of exposures, a lot of things going to be going down, a lot of pointing fingers, a lot of people resigning and leaving Congress. We've seen this already. A lot of the political figures hightailing it. They're they're booking it out of here. They're like, this, this is my last year. I'm resigning. I'm not, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm bye, you know, and they're gone. Um, because I think we're starting to see the exposures come out. They know something's up. They know something's going to hit the fan. They know they have no control over this. It's not just a military. It's God that is doing this. They, they sense something is wrong, which is going to put those who have the demonic agenda and are sold out to it to just freak and push the button and just go, you know, code red. And just like, nope, we're, we're just going to try and annihilate everything and, you know, put the people back into our power. They're, they're going to do something really dumb, which is going to expose them. So we need to be aware and awake to what it, it is, whatever it is. And that uh, hopefully it will wake up the sleeping masses and come into the fold underneath uh, the Lord and Savior. So become part of God's children. So I guess that's it for now. Um, I'm going to go off and celebrate Christmas. I hope you all have a wonderful holiday weekend. And I'm not sure if I'll talk to you again. But if not, I uh, love you. Take care. Stay strong in the Lord. And I hope more of you come into his fold. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.